because they do X, Y, and Z. And they may do those X, Y, and Z, and those things may be very good. But you don't know what's going on yeah. behind the curtain. <laughs> you know, they may not even feel that they're a success because of certain things that are going on in, in their personal life. So the, the, def the definition is always up to us and is always being created and refined by us. Amen. Amen. Wow. Skip down. I want to go down to where it says, what is evil? Principle number 12. Tell us what evil is, Prophet Fitzroy. Evil is the misuse of the law of freedom. Okay, so now you know the cat's out the bag. <laughs> <laughs> evil, evil is not some devil someplace with some red tail, some horns, whatever. Evil is a misuse of the law of freedom. When you misuse the law of freedom, then evil shall be upon you. Mm. You chose not to operate in the liberty wherewith Christ has set you free. Prophet Fitzroy. The age-long discussion of the problem of evil will never be answered until we realize that evil is not a thing of itself. Mm. It is simply a misuse of the law of freedom. The problem of evil will be met only to the degree that we cease doing evil and do good, for evil will disappear when we no longer indulge in it. When the whole world sees the right and does it, then, and not until then, will the problem of evil be solved for the entire race. Oh my, that, that, that sounds very self-explanatory there. If you don't see evil, then you won't participate in evil. If you see evil, you'll be a part of that evil. Mm. Evil will disappear when we no longer indulge in it. Stop doing evil things. Mm. Wow. <laughs> That's simple. You know, you, um, we've often heard so, said, do unto others as you want them to do unto you. Well, you know, you want good things being done unto you, do good things to people. You want evil things being done back to you, then, you know, you know what to do. <laughs> I can tell you to do that, but you know, just do the converse. All right. Well, principle number 13, a blind force. Force. The law is a blind force. The law is a blind force. Unless we misuse it, we should be very careful to follow a constructive course. The law is absolute, and we should trust its impersonal action implicitly. It can do anything for us that we can conceive of it doing. It is the law of freedom to all who believe in and obey it. Amen. The law is for you if you're for it. Mm. <laughs> It'll work for you if you work it. It'll work against you if you work against it. It's that simple. Continue reading. A blind force continuation. The law must be made known in order to be fulfilled. The deliverance under Moses is the freedom gained from the taskmaster, as learned from the law of life. For we can never come under grace until we first know the law. The law must be made known in order to be fulfilled. We see freedom from all unhappy condition comes through knowledge, a knowledge of spiritual law. Amen. So the law must be known in order for it to be fulfilled. That's why you're here tonight, so that you can know and understand the law of freedom, so that you can be free. Wow. Principle number 14, no respecter of person. The law of freedom is no respecter of person. Read. The law is no respecter of persons and will bring good or evil to any, according to his use or misuse of it. It will be a law of freedom to the righteous and one of bondage to those who misuse it. We cannot escape from the creative power of our thought, and there is no use in trying to do so. We all need to do, we, all we need to do is to use the law from the right motive, and we shall be made free. Okay, I love that. When you use the law from the right motive, you'll be free. So, here we go. The converse of that is, if you use the law from the wrong motive, you'll be bond, bound. Hmm. Okay? All right. Principle number 15. Experience. The law of freedom is the only law in our experience. Prophet Fitzroy. The law of freedom is the only law there is in our experience. We enter into that freedom with joy, free from every sense of sadness and burden. Thank you. We enter into it with laughter with lightness. It is something which lifts us 
above the heavens, above the heaviness of morbidity and lack and limitation, into that rarer atmosphere where our opinions do not collide and we enter into it with peace, free from fear. Amen. Wow. Amen. Principle number 16, choose freedom. Choose freedom from the human jungle. Choose freedom. Choose freedom from the human jungle. That is all you need to do in order to start. Okay, stop right there. I just want, let's type this in. I choose to be free from the human jungle. Come on, type Amen. that. Amen. I, I feel we need to write that in. I choose to be free from the human jungle. I choose to be free from the human jungle jungle type that down let's free ourselves we're gonna be free coming out here tonight <laughs> <laughs> all right go ahead prophet Fitzroy. okay start with that is all start right there that is all you need to do in order to start can i say that's all you need to do you want to be free tonight choose to free yourself from the human jungle go ahead continue your very choice is an expression of affection for the true and the happy Say with Henry David Thoreau, I know of no more encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability of a man to elevate his life by a conscious endeavor. Now, step forward with a conscious endeavor to understand human life in order to change your life. So here, let, let, let's say this together. And we'll say this here, and you just kind of say it behind us. I know of no more encouraging fact. I know, I know, I know of, of no more encouraging, encouraging fact than the unquestionable ability. Than the unquestionable ability, ability of a man. Of a man, man to elevate his life. To elevate his life by a conscious endeavor. By a conscious endeavor. endeavor. That means you make the choice. Wow. You, the choice is yours. You, you know, life is about choices, and you have to choose. To be free Amen. you can do that as you begin to move forward in the law of freedom and choose to free yourself from the bondage of mm. human jungle jesus uh. prophetess kelly yes so what this is basically saying is the scripture says choose ye this day you're choosing whether you want to be free or whether you want to stay in bondage you're choosing whether you want to um transfer your mind or you want to stay exactly in a mediocre or average mindset and then you're choosing also what domain you choose each day to put on what I felt was so um, powerful when prophetess bird was speaking on the prodigal son he chose his domain and even though whatever he was walking through previously he must have stayed in the state of the consciousness that he was going to be walking in later he stayed into um, the power of the now and same thing with Nelson Mandela even when he was in prison he stayed in that knowingness that he would not always be there mm. he chose that the domain that he was going to be walking into and, and can I tell you that, yes, that choice that choose you, ye this day, can I tell you this day is every day? Yes. Oh. <laughs> you yes. make choices every day. Wow. Yes. You don't choose today and then it's just going to continue on. No. Yes. You have to make a conscious decision each day that you're going to choose to free yourself from the human jungle. That's right. Mm. Yes. So... <laughs> In a way, we're never free well, <laughs> until we leave this earth. I mean, it's, it's, it's in a way, in a way. Now, I, I'm not trying to no, no, say, no, but there was an element, you know, in everything there was an element yes, of truth. Is. Yes. So, and, and Bishop has said it this way, that it's, he, he talks about in the law of the journey, that we are const, always constantly improving. Yes. We're, you, we, Bishop has taught us we are never to feel like we've arrived. Right, right. that's right. We should never get to a certain age and say, okay, I'm at this age and this is where my creativity stops. This is where, you know, I, I've, I've reached where I'm... And we shouldn't have that feeling, well, I've reached a certain age. I shouldn't have to... So no, we always have to. Mm -hmm. and, and then that's what kept Moses uh, vibrant. That's what kept Joshua vibrant and Caleb. And why, you know, it says, the scripture says that 120, Moses' eye was not dim and his strength was not abated. Mm -hmm. Because he's operating in this, you know, constant renewal and, and choosing of, yes. of a path of life, elevating consciousness. That's what yes. it's all about. Wow. I, I was trying to remember the scripture where Paul said he count, he, he count himself not to have apprehended. Yes. Uh, uh, is it Ephesians? It's an I, I, I press toward the mark of the heart. I press forward to the mark of the high yes. calling in Christ. Christ. In oh. Jesus. In I other words, 